Hey, what's up guys? So I've been getting a lot of emails lately from you guys, a lot of game developers wanting me to um, review their Steam pages and active Kickstarter campaigns and things like that. So I wanted to take a look at a couple of Kickstarter campaigns that I was asked to review. Now, one of them is not doing particularly well and the developer kind of reached out to me and to say, hey, you know, what's going on here? I had all these, um, you know, followers going into the campaign and somehow it's just not working. So I wanted to look at that one first. And then I wanted to look at one which is actually doing quite well and it looks like it's about to get funded. So I thought it would be interesting to contrast these two campaigns against each other and see if we can find the, you know, key factors that determine the success or failure. So here's one of the emails. Hi John, I follow your YouTube and I enjoy your videos. We have launched our Kickstarter campaign last week. We have been developing our game more than a year now. We have spent a lot of money on our marketing campaign before we launched. It went really well. We got almost 4,500 subscribers. But when the campaign went live, only 115 pledged until today. This is really disappointing. At this rate, it is due for failure. We would really appreciate it if you would maybe can take a look at our page and see where we can improve or what you think needs to change. I would really appreciate your feedback. All right. So here is the campaign, Legion Dragons, Kingdom of Tyra. So, you know, we've 12 days left and only, you know, um, 30 or so percent funded. It's not looking too promising at this point. So let's do a complete sweep of this campaign and see what is going on. You know, why are people not funding this? I'm going to skip watching this video for a moment because I want to kind of want to uh, simulate the behavior a user might be on like a mobile device or something like that. And I typically find, at least for me, I don't click the video straight away. I usually just kind of sweep through the top section of the campaign, see if anything catches my attention. And then if it does, I'll go back and commit to the video. So we get some story stuff here. Are you ready to set out on the search for Eric? Conquer evil dark forces and save the kingdom of Tyra from... Lord. So the first thing I will say is having that as your opening graphic, your first graphic of the campaign is probably not doing the game much service. Some ambiguous hero at this point, conquer, um, you know, evil forces and save the kingdom. You know, it's probably as generic as it comes in terms of, you know, um, story tropes, the hero's journey or whatever. So before we go any further, I want to make it clear that this developer has, of course, reached out to me specifically with the intention of getting some hard truth and answers. So it's going to not going to help them for me to sugarcoat things. I think it's um, beneficial for them and the community if I can kind of put my critical lens on and intentionally look for the problems. You know, I'm sure this campaign has a lot of merits, but of course, that's not going to help um, this campaign at this point in time. Um, I think understanding what likely went wrong is much more uh, beneficial. So I think this probably could have been a nice GIF or punchy graphic that really kind of captures the gameplay, you know. And it's quite long to scroll as well, you know, especially on a mobile. So we've got our first graphic of the campaign. And look, there's just not a whole lot going on here. It's a um, character with some kind of a pet any capable Unity developer could probably make this scene in, a, in an afternoon or even just a couple of hours. I mean, that's the hard truth of this. And I think most of you who do work in Unity or Unreal or whatever can probably attest to this uh, being the truth. Um, so, I mean, a bit of more movement in this would have been nice, like, you know, some kind of action. There's probably just a bit too much kind of preamble, too much front-loaded story. I think the gameplay is the primary thing. Maybe a bit of a story, but primarily focus on the gameplay. Doomed King. Dark Quest. Just scrolling without watching the videos. I don't know what this game is. And I think that's part of the, the problem in why the conversion is just not taking place. If the character was maybe in a better, stronger pose, or maybe just doing something interesting, rather than just standing there, hands by its sides, I mean, no movement, or at least if it was a GIF or something. Let's watch one of his videos, shall we? Let's get a... Oh, what's that? The audio is not... I'm not getting any audio on this video. Let me just check the main... Okay, so that one has audio. Yeah, I don't know. Is that meant to be like that? Well, anyway, let's just watch a little bit of this, shall we? So shooting a bunch of wolves with magic. 
So you get some dungeon crawling. What I'm seeing here in terms of that footage is more or less like every third person fantasy kind of unity project. Um, and I mean, even the kind of skill effects, it's all fairly run of the mill. So this video here, this kind of, you know, campaign space, this valuable real estate is taken up by essentially a walk cycle. You know, I thought it was going to pan to a big boss or something, but it's just, um, yeah. So, you know, like, I mean, there's, there's a general issue with just the media being shown, not really can conveying any um, meaningful gameplay or any hooks. This font is kind of cool. That's fine. But this sub font, this um, sans serif doesn't really match the theme of the game. There's just a lot of, I'm yet to see like, wow, look at this gameplay. You know, I want to fund this. With a game like this, I think the problem is this game more or less already exists on Steam many, many, many times over. You know, type in fantasy, third person, and you know, I'm sure you'll find something fairly similar. Mind-blowing PC gameplay. You got to be very careful before making claims like this, I think, on Kickstarter campaigns because people will um, see right through them. And I think the developers are kind of almost being a bit tongue in cheek with it, you know, mind blowing, you know, but at the same time, uh, maybe not. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, just I would kind of caution against this kind of stuff unless you can truly deliver on this mind blowing uh, PC gameplay stuff. Because um, this may not match up with this. Legion Dragons is working tirelessly to ensure that Kingdom of Tyra is the best action RPG you will ever play on PC. Kingdom of Tyra will never bore you thanks to the many features that make it action-packed around every corner. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure these statements align with what you're showcasing because words are kind of meaningless. You know, we need to see something and what, what's confusing me here also legion dragons is working tirelessly to ensure that kingdom of Tyra. i thought the game was called legion dragons legion dragons kingdom of tyra but you're referring to legion dragons like it's almost the name of the um the studio is your studio called legion dragons okay maybe it is i don't know this kind of conflict in the naming could lead to kind of issues with search and discovery on social media. If someone wants to look this up, you know, are they looking up Kingdom of Tyra or, or Legion Dragons? You know, the studio was founded in 2016 under the name AC Pro. The name was recently changed to Legion Dragons in 2022. Okay, so we have some confirmation. Legion Dragons is the name of the studio. I really 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 do not think that you should be naming your campaign legion dragons because that's suggesting it's the name of the project it's very confusing part-time development began in april 2021 so that's not that long ago and part-time you know part-time development 10 months of work kickstarter preparation began in july okay very interesting so you've begun your Kickstarter preparations three months after part-time development has started. Full-time development begins right after our campaign. Fully playable demo game available April 2022. So after the campaign. So I think there are some real issues here. So this is once again, in my opinion, a case of um, game developers perhaps misunderstanding the purpose of Kickstarter, especially in where we are now with all the different failed and scam campaigns in the game space in the past. Um, you know, the sentiment towards game Kickstarters has changed significantly over the years. And to say like, you know, we are starting our main development phase after this campaign is really not gonna cut it. You know, this game should already be well in development. There should be already a demo, not a, um, a demo after the campaign. There should be a demo now. Um, you know, that's how you're going to get people interested. So with all that in mind, I think asking for um, 31,000 or 32,000 almost Australian dollars, which is approximately, what are we dealing with, like 
20,000 US, 20, 22,000 US approximately. I mean, that's a lot of money to ask. I think you got to really have your ducks in a row before you're going to ask for that kind of money. Um, you really got to have some pretty compelling footage to showcase. And I guess I'm just not seeing it in this campaign, um, unfortunately, guys. You know, um, and it's not at all my intention, of course, to be harsh or negative towards the developer. I'm just trying to understand what could have gone wrong here, you know, and help them and educate them and maybe give them a, a, a second shot at this. So the developer mentions they had uh, 4,500 subscribers when the campaign went live, but only 115 people pledged to the campaign. Now, this kind of conversion is not um, completely unusual because you got to understand when you go into these things, you're not going to get a one-to-one -one conversion. You're not going to get 4,500 people backing it. You know, Kickstarter is not going to do any organic um, discovery or, or growth for you. Only when your campaign does very well, it's like a shoe-in and has like nice overfunding potential, then uh, Kickstarter will then, you know, start promoting it for you because it's free money for them, you know, and they, they're making a cut of every um, successful campaign. So unless you can kind of prove yourself to Kickstarter, forget about getting any organic discovery from them. You have to bring that audience with you. All right, so let's do a search on Twitter and see what we can find under uh, Kingdom of Tyra. See what kind of marketing hype. What have we stumbled upon here? This doesn't look like um, a game. Yeah. Guys, pick your game name very carefully. Make sure it doesn't conflict with some um, some kind of a raunchy TV show, or which I'm imagining this is. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a problem for their exposure. Yeah, there's no nothing related to um, any game here. Okay, so it looks like we've found the guy. So you know, three followers. Here is a tweet about the Kickstarter campaign. Zero likes, uh, zero retweets, no hashtags, no, um, yeah, um, you know, adding Kickstarter, which is probably not going to do much. Yeah, like, so a couple of tweets that basically probably got no views. So I've got a Kickstarter link, um, kick track, which is just like a Kickstarter metrics, no Reddit and post. And there's also no Steam page. I feel like if you're going to be running a um, campaign, at least put up a Steam page. Show you're committed to the project. Show you're in, it's in development and that you've at least paid, you know, the $100 fee to Steam to get your game up there. That you're committed enough at least to, you know, get the Steam page up. Because if you don't even have a Steam page up, I just feel it personally, it feel, I feel it reflects rather poorly on, you know, the, the current development state. So I don't think there's too much more to say on this campaign. I think it's very clear as to um, what the issues are and there's, there's quite a few. So anyways, what we're going to do now is I've got another campaign. It's finishing very soon and it's doing very well. So I'm going to have a look at that campaign and we're going to see kind of what are the differences. Why is that one doing so well and this one is not. So this is campaign number two. This one was also emailed to me by the developer and they were in the very early stages of um, of funding. I think the campaign had just started and they were just kind of here somewhere. But it took me a while to get around to this. But <laughs> I, I double checked it and I refreshed my window and suddenly this went vroom. So I was like, wow. But to be honest, I already knew early on that this campaign was going to be a success. And I'll, um, I'll go through the reasons now. Okay, so let's do a quick um, tour of this campaign. So straight away, we've got some impactful GIFs. And look at this GIF. It presents almost like a little mini video, but it tells you a lot about this game. It's like a survival game. It's got a, a beautiful art style. And you've got some interesting aspect here with the um, dropping tiles, which I imagine is going to be part of the kind of game hook. So I've got some story here. Corpse Creek 1983, the darkness of the midnight sky was interrupted by a brilliant green light. The anomaly was followed by a flurry of stones, a flame that fell upon the otherwise quiet town. Folks stormed from their homes, dazed by the sky illuminated up above. It didn't take long for the first of the meteorites to reach the earth with a massive bang. Just a really concise 
um, nice opening paragraph. You know, no names, no references to characters that we don't know yet or have no connection to. And then you get this nice complementary image here, which kind of supplements that opening paragraph. And it's in a different art style to the actual game, which I think is, is good because it shows there's an art budget. You're conveying a kind of premium feel to show, say, hey, look, we're not just doing this kind of low poly um, top down crafting kind of style, but we also have an art budget. And down here, we're already up to the gameplay, you know, and look, we're only up to here in the campaign scroll where the other one was like, you know, halfway down or something. So, you know, we the campaign starts with a, a powerful GIF, which showcases the gameplay very clearly. Like, this is what this is about. Do you want to read more, basically? And then you've got just a little bit of story and then boom, straight into the gameplay, you know. Gameplay is king. And here, more of that... Um, that terrain snapping, which looks very interesting, and we can see that this seems to be an, uh, a theme of the of the camp of the project. See, so above snakes differs from other survival games, as the world is not pre-generated. You have the power to generate it yourself. Game hook: the land is constructed via isometric tiles and contains elements of differing biomes, randomized attributes, and special abilities that adjacent tiles may benefit from. Okay, so they're telling us, you know, about the unique um, aspects of this game, the unique selling points. Um, and I kind of feel like we didn't really get that with the other campaign. So all this, you know, is about um, the gameplay, basically. About how this mechanic works. Cook, craft, some gifts, and some kind of interesting diagrams that kind of explain how the crafting will work. Very intuitive, you know, hide plus this and that equals rope or sleeping bag. So what I like about this campaign is it's not very wordy. The, um, the information is very concise. They're using images to supplement the words. You know, I like that whole idea of show me, don't tell me. Um, and I think that should be kept in mind when doing this kind of campaigns. This is nice. This, you know, shows that there's an upgrading process um, of even pickaxe, which kind of reminds me of RuneScape. I played a lot of RuneScape. <laughs> I'll have to make a video about that one day. So this kind of stuff is very popular at the moment. There's a game called um, Lens World. You guys may have seen it. Sorry, Lens Island. Very popular. I think it was also on Kickstarter. So the developer has read the market very well here. They know that other games of this genre in this style have succeeded on Kickstarter, have had um, uh, successful launches on Steam. So they've kind of tapped into that and leveraged that market sentiment for this campaign. Say, okay, if those games have done so well so recently, then maybe my game will do well too. Uh, so I've just got more information about the gameplay. Very detailed information explaining um, graphically how the game works and what you get like I mean it's really is um, you could say the perfect campaign they've done a really good job so with 21 days to go this campaign is on the verge of getting funded in fact if I refresh this page who knows <laughs> oh not quite maybe tomorrow morning but um, you know it's very impressive and I just want to congratulate um, the developer here on getting funded and overfunded. You know, it's, it's a brilliant campaign. You've done it very well. I can see the, the time and energy you've put into this campaign, just the graphic design, and a lot of um, thought has gone into how you're conveying the information of the game. So well done. So 806 backers. So I imagine this campaign had quite the following uh, going into this. So let's, uh, let's check that out now, guys. Let's have a look at what they did in the lead up to this campaign. Above Snake's game. And the first thing, boom, Steam page. Very, very important. Because we can see the progress of the game, and we'll come back to that in a moment. And okay, we've got videos on YouTube from uh, various channels talking about this. Various posts on Twitter. Two days ago, one day ago, two hours ago. So they're really working hard. Um, really working hard to promote this campaign. Let's jump onto that Twitter. So this is, of course, the creator of the campaign. Links to the Steam page and the uh, Kickstarter. Pinned a tweet. Engaging with the community, you know, retweeting other people who have found this and are sharing it. So some interviews with other people talking about his game. And um, I believe that's um, German, I think. Yeah. So really doing 
the legwork, you know? Um, so let's check out the um, Steam page. So now live on Kickstarter, you've got, you know, um, links to the Kickstarter campaign. So this is the other reason why it's important to have a Steam page at least, because you can um, then drive traffic from the um, Steam page to the Kickstarter. And if you've um, if your Steam page has been active for some time, you might have a following. You can do kind of um, like news um, in the in the news in the community news tab and things like that. So they have a publisher here, Cryptivo. You know, some publishers will even help fund the development of a game, so people don't have to go to crowdfunding. So this is the publisher on uh, Twitter. So you can see here they're promoting the uh, game in their banner. They got 15,000 followers, right, doing some kind of um, Twitch streams. I always find it interesting when um, you have that many followers but then get no engagement. So I've gone into Wayback Machine and looked at the Steam page for Above Snakes. And this was the first um, record of the game on the 10th of April 2021. And it's interesting just to see how different um, the game looks. So you can see even just the logo is, is very different. It's, they've updated a lot of things. Huh, so what's interesting is that they initially had a planned launch date of November 16th, which I imagine was um, last year, because this was in 2021. That's interesting. So they were planning to go to launch. Yeah, look, this game should have already launched last year. <laughs> but, you know... Things change, things happen, development um, cycles stretch out based on various factors and, you know, people had a, a tough couple of years, so anything can happen. So they already had this publisher lined up back then. And this game has clearly already been in development for some time. So unlike that other campaign, um, this game has a long paper trail. You know, I, I, if I was to put an, a date on how long this has been in development at this point, um, it's probably already been at least a year in development, I would say, just by looking at some of the, some of the media. So they've already amassed some uh, following going into this campaign. One thing I noticed, though, with these survival games, they starting to look more and more like one another. I just want to show you this other game, uh, Lens Island. It's recently came out. There's been a few of these now that kind of look more or less like the same game, but they have, you know, variations in, in the game mechanics. Well, anyway. So that wraps it up, guys. And I just want to say to the developers who reached out to me regarding uh, these campaigns, to the first one, the Kingdom of Tyra developers, um, congratulations on getting this far. I can imagine it's not easy putting these campaigns together. It can be quite stressful. Um, and I, I hope you guys bounce back from this. Maybe you can have a second chance to redeploy with some new insights on a new platform like Indiegogo or something like that. But either way, I want to see you guys get to market. I want to see you launch. So whatever it takes, keep pushing forward and you're going to get there, guys. And for the second game, uh, Above Snakes, <laughs> Uh, congratulations. I'm very, very excited for you. I can just imagine what you must be feeling. Um, by the time you watch this, you will likely be funded, if not if not overfunded. So well done. You know, just a, a really great campaign, a really good execution, and I'm very impressed. So thanks for getting in touch with me, and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. And to all of you who are watching, check out their store links, check out their social media, and um, support their campaigns if you like what you see, because it's always good to support good quality indie game dev work. Um, so anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please do give the video a like, drop me a comment, let me know what you thought about the campaigns, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this video useful and you'd like to see more, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. If you want to support this channel further, you can do so through the Patreon. Alternatively, you can consider wishlisting my current game development, Blood and Mead. I'd really appreciate that, guys. Links for those will be down below. See you all and take care.